get cracking. And welcome back, everybody, to Game 3 of Na'Vi ver versus Virtus Pro. It's been one hell of a series so far with Virtus Pro making quite the upset in Game 1, but Na'Vi struck back pretty damn hard in Game 2, and now we are already under the way getting into Game 3, and our draft is already pretty far through. Nobody's using any bonus time as I welcome in my uh, my play-by-play -play caster. It's going to be AC who's going to be leading the way on that one. Uh, I'm sorry, right now there seems to be a bit of an issue with your audio feed. I'm actually getting about a four-second, five-second echo back of everything you're saying, so I think you're sending an auxiliary uh, audio feed. Uh, we good now? I, I'm, I'm not getting it on... Really? Do you have... Uh, do you, do you, wait, wait, wait. Do you have... Do you have broadcasters muted, right? Co-broadcasters? AC. Oh dear. I think I just might have, might have lost AC. Hold on. Sorry guys, we're still working on uh, all the kinks in this uh, new studio, but uh, not entirely sure what just happened. Whether we dropped or what happened, but uh, I seem to have lost AC. Well, I'll try go ahead and uh, try and give him uh, another call. But uh, we'll see what's happening, guys. Sorry, we're still working out the studios on. Uh, on our I new think studio. We're good now. I think you we're think good we're good now? now? I went away and then the call dropped and now. I yeah, see. I, I did not touch a single thing. I was just like, oh, yeah. oh what's wrong? What's wrong? And I'm like frantically looking at all these measures and valves and going, oh, yeah. God, it's something. It's something here. But, huh. Weird. No problem. No problem. It's uh, it's okay. I'm jumping right back into it now that uh, everything is settled. But see, this is the good thing. It's your first day in the new studio, which means everything will go wrong. And then from here on out, it'll be beautiful for the rest of your life. And everything that's done uh, by joined it always of the highest quality. So I'm sure this will continue to be the case as well. But anyway, take a look at Navi and VP, as you said. It's been a thrilling series so far. We saw Navi push to the brink in Game 1. Ended up coming up short there, but able to take control against Virtus Pro in Game 2 and deal with that lineup. Virtus Pro, though, well, I mean, neither of these teams really deviating much. We see Navi once again snagging Puppy as Crystal Maiden with Invoker for the third time in a row. Going to be played by Dindy, while Virtus Pro gets the Visage in the OD one more time. So we were kind of suspecting that uh, their draft in Game 2 was a bit of a pre-med draft, just, you know, having a plan and wanting to execute it, et cetera. But, I mean, this, this is a combo you can build a lot of different compositions around. As we even talked about coming down to the fifth and final pickup that they made at the end of the Game 2 draft, they could have very easily slid in a hard carry or they could have gone for something a little unorthodox like a Pugna and gone with a straight-up hard push kind of a lineup. Still yet, all those options available, but should be a thrilling conclusion. Both of these teams have played remarkably well today. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's been a, a really big surprise to many, many people that Virtus Pro were actually able to take a game off of Navi and may even win this series. Um, and, and what's been even more surprising to me is that the draft has not really changed a whole lot. Now, Virtus Pro changed their draft uh, from game one to game two, but Navi still keeping on from the very beginning, still picking up the Invoker very, very early on. We're going to see them go ahead and favor the Lifestealer once again, as they are masters of that hero. But uh, Virtus Pro seem to be copying kind of their draft from Game 2. Mm -hmm. oh, so far, it's identical on both sides. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see. I mean, the Bristleback's available if they want to go back to it. And and, you know, what it seemed like they were really missing in uh, in Game 2 was their offensive trial lane didn't work out quite as well as they would have liked. Um, they really, really were just torn apart by Phonic's nature's profit. He just did so Five much work seconds, in terms of really taking early towers. And there was a period where Virtus Pro was definitely in command of the early and mid game. They uh, were forcing Navi into fights they didn't want to take. And whenever they had the advantage, they were able to take the wins. But with the mobility of the nature's profit, which is banned out this time around, we saw Navi he just ratted out. They just flat out rat-toted them and didn't take any fights. Instead, took pretty even trades in terms of towers and map control. And by the time all was said and done, Navi's lineup just uh, matured a little bit quicker. And this is one of those rare things so far anyway. We'll see if it's going to continue to look this way. But this is one of those rare kind of situations where we might get to see a replay of that game with the one key factor we both identified, Phonics Nature's Profit, taken out. I mean, at this point, Navi knows what they like. They may just go right back to it. Yeah, this is, uh, this is something that it seems like we, <laughs> both teams identify the fact that, okay, we lost the, we lost the game. Remaining. 
We're going to go the same draft. We're just going to ban out some of those key heroes that we didn't want to deal with. Navi, take out the, the hard carry of Naga Siren and the Luna. Meanwhile, Virtus Pro, take away that, that Nature's Prophet. You know, both of them identifying what really was the crucial factor in their loss and still picking up kind of the same lineup. Instead, we're going to see Bristleback as well picked up by Virtus Pro. And uh, Navi, go ahead and pick up the, the Lion. Is there some sort of, uh, was there in the lobby chat Gentleman's some sort of, yeah, exactly, gentlemen's agreement? I, I, I didn't see it. I was uh, You guys are actually waiting on me as I had to get rid of some used pop that I drank earlier this morning. But going to be a Dazzle pickup from Virtus Pro. Now, now that's fun. I love seeing a Dazzle pickup. The hero can be a team fight monster, synergizes extremely well with Bristleback, with Weave. And yeah, this is already be, going to be a very fun look coming out of VP. But I mean, if you're Navi, if it ain't just broke, don't fix it. I mean, you bad. just dominated. I mean, the game did go, you know, into the later minutes of the game. It wasn't like some 20 minute GG or anything, but they were in firm control of that game after they were able to hold off the early aggression between 10 and 20 minutes that Virtus Pro tried to bring to bear. So they know how to beat it. They know they have a lineup that did succeed at it before. It's just going to be missing one Five crucial element. Remaining. Now the question is, what did they they fill in for that crucial element, taking away the clockwork, taking away some reach of Virtus Pro's lineup. I'm, I, I want to see what VP is worried about. What is their big concern with this fifth position pick for Navi? I, I think that. Um Pretty much bounding out any sort of really strong mobility here. We still need an offlaner, and they're going to go ahead and take out the, the timber saw. Both teams still need an offlaner. So Virtus Pro, go ahead and take away the timber saw, who's a strong mid game oriented hero who has a lot of mobility on him, and is also really good versus a bristleback because of his pure damage he's able to put into place. You can't even pick up an early cloak on bristleback to try and, and, and defeat that because it's pretty much all pure damage coming in. So a timber saw is very good versus bristleback in that regards, and uh, Navi take away that big ganking hero. Clockwork, who is really, really good at being able to isolate the Life Stealer in team fights with the Cogs, force Staff himself out, and Life Stealer is trapped inside these Cogs for a good five to six seconds during the middle of a team fight, and that, that's really, really tough to be able to deal with. So they take away that, and all of a sudden, Navi go ahead and pick up what should be an aggressive tri lane uh, with the. Uh, with the Razor, last pick. Five yeah, I really like the Razor pickup quite a lot. Um, I like what they're going to be able to do with him in terms of, in particular, nullifying the OD as much as they can. I mean, Bristleback, obviously, is a great target for Static Link as well. Um, but the OD, if they are able to lock him down, able to get him leashed up, he really just doesn't hit quite as hard. And now there's that Pugna pick uh, that I was anticipating in Game 2. I really like the way a Pugna fits into this lineup. I really like how much pressure they're going to be able to put on. But one once again, they faced the same problem they faced in game two. They got to get work done. They can't run out of steam. Like, I mean, there are some lineups that can just chug along and just be kind of like a train. Slowly get your wheels moving, but then once you get up to speed, it takes uh, a, a literal mountain to stop that momentum. Virtus Pro has more of a, a shotgun kind of a lineup. They need to just pull the trigger, go hit their target, and not look back. And if they're able to do that, they have the ability to take towers so quick. They have a lot of uh, a really nice mix of damage. They have some armor reduction as well that'll help them deal with a number of these targets. But uh, Phonic on this uh, on this Razor, yep, they're going to be running what seems to be an aggressive tri-lane solo farm. Uh, Phonic's Razor, perhaps. And this this should be a fun game. Win, lose, or draw, no matter who ends up walking away. Victor's here, and it is worth mentioning this is the D2CL debut for both of these teams, so both want to start out, start off their group stage campaign with a W. But uh, no matter who wins here, it, it's been a great series, and I have no doubt this third game is going to be just as thrilling as well. Yeah, absolutely. I've gained a lot more respect for the Virtus Pro team. I think they're really coming mm -hmm. along with that. Uh, both games, they, they were looking very, very strong. I think that maybe the draft played an issue in game two, but either way, they still played it out um, very, very well. And I like this new draft coming out from Virtus Pro. Now, Navi really threw a wrench in the drafting phase with that last pick, Razor, because it addresses the OD. It's a strong hero versus Bristleback going into the mid-game. Any sort of melee hero is going to have an issue with Razor pretty much stealing all of his damage and turning it back onto him. So that completely messes up the laning phase for uh, Virtus Pro, and they're trying to adjust. How are they going to be able to deal with it? And it looks right now like they're going to be doing dual lanes with Pugna going up against the Razor in the middle lane. 
Yeah, I like this choice to send Pugna against Razor in mid lane. Razor is one of the best counter picks to an OD. He just kind of doesn't give a damn about Astral in prison. I mean, yes, it helps out uh, the OD quite a bit, but Static Link is still just as problematic, and it has such a low mana cost that it's really not that big of an issue. So instead of putting the uh, putting God's OD in a situation where he at best breaks even, they're going to put him in a situation where he can, they hope, do well. Now, with Funic going mid on the Razor, this is just a brilliant anticipation, really, coming out from Virtus Pro, anticipating that Dendi will be on the Invoker and will be elsewhere. So, really love the laning decisions here, but down at bottom with uh, KKY and Havos trying to go up against NS and Illidan, this is uh, deadly on both sides. A little bit of a misstep on either side could end up uh, giving us a first blood. So both teams really have to watch themselves in this laning phase. Make sure they don't give up too much because I, especially Navi. Navi, again, with a very well-rounded lineup that could scale well to pretty much any stage of the game. While Virtus Pro, if they're able to get ahead early, could just end up running them over. Yeah, absolutely. I like the fact that uh, the Dazzle pickup for Virtus Pro was very, very strong. It's not only synergizes really well with the uh, Bristleback, or the Dazzle mm -hmm. pickup synergizes really well with the Bristleback, but uh, it also gives them a little bit more late game because Weave, with the buff it's been receiving, it's actually a much more potent ability than it once was. It now takes mm -hmm. the important part of it as you level it up, as in it, the armor decreases faster. So if you're using it as you go into a team fight, it's actually more effective uh, faster instead of just being going longer, in which case most people just walk away from the team fight at that point in time. So I think that buff has really played a large part in Dazzle's uh, increase as a, a serious competitor for a, a good support. And uh, I love the fact that Virtus Pro put the Pugna up against the Razor, makes this lane a little bit easier because they knew Dendi was pretty much going to be solo in, these, uh, in this safe lane. Puppy is doing what he can, but most of the time he's jungling. Yeah, and again, this, you can't overstate how, how big a win this is going to be for them in both lanes. I mean, we can already see Razor. He's tied with Pug. I mean, Smile's not dominating by any stretch, but he's doing well. More importantly, though, God sitting atop the CS charts at nine for himself. Dendi with just three to his name and continues to be imprisoned, even trying to hide out a little bit so he can avoid being in prison. But his damage... Uh, he's being forced into an XOR build, which we saw based on game one. He did prefer the Wex, at least in that uh, in that certain in that case. So he went max exhorting game two, but we'll see where where they end up going with this. I'm just really really liking Virtus Pro's confidence with this draft and their anticipation of Navi's lanes it was just spot on, and so far they're reaping the rewards. Yeah, they're doing a really, really good job when it comes to CS. They almost have the top four CS on the board. Um, right now, Bristlebacks trailing a little bit behind the Razor, but they're still, every single lane is winning, pretty much. So they're doing a good job in that regard. And I love the fact that Dendi is going to Exort build. Pretty much the OD kind of forces you to go for that, because not only in the laning situation, but it also makes the EMP Tornado um, not nearly as strong because of Essensor, and he's being pushed out consistently. So they're mm -hmm. addressing that big playmaker in Dendi already with their dual lane. But we're actually going to see an aggressive try lane. Now that Puppy has been able to farm up the jungle a little bit and pick up level 3, he's going to try and get the jump. And S caught out. Frostbitten used a shallow grave. Shot a little early on himself, but Illidan zoning them out with the help of Smile moving his way in with the haste rune. Puppy could end up being our first blood. Check that. It'll be Havost. They're going to take a 2 for nil exchange, and Smile's not done. He's got Decrep ready. He's going to dive KKY. He will turn around and shoot the Impale. Haste is going to run out, and Smile, whoo. Came very close to dying there. Makes it away with 40 HP. And oh. oh, Sunstrike catches him over by the side shop. Well shot by Dendi, and that at least gets them on the board. Nonetheless, they lost Pavost in the exchange, so that's another bad exchange going the way of Virtus Pro. They've actually sent Havost up to the top lane now, finally giving some help to Dendi, who needs it desperately, sitting at less CS than the Crystal Maiden at four minutes in. Yeah, Navi know that they can't stick with these static lanes. They're losing, and they recognize that fact. Many teams don't, and they start moving around the map. They're trying to catch VP out of position, out of control. So here comes this, again, three heroes going to the side lane, but this time Virtus Pro learned their lesson from bottom. They realize that Navi are going to be trying to uh, group up and move around the map a little bit earlier than normal. And uh, so they're going to stay ahead of that. But really well done. I'm, again, trying to address the Dazzle like that so early. Shallow Grave is such a potent ability to be able to just lengthen it out. And then you're stuck in the middle of a Bristleback. It was fortunate that Smile was able to pick up that Haste Rune. But still, it still would have been a hero going down because the Bristleback is just so good in those situations where he's surrounded by heroes. Invertus Pro really liking 
their chances so far. I mean, the lanes are continuing to reshape a little bit, and looks like this top lane is going to end up being our next big battleground as Kuroki's hooked up with Dindy. Dindy just short of level five. Going to move out. Here comes KKY Forge Spirit. Invoked out, and there's going to be an imprison to buy him some time. Cold Snap on the god, though. Looks like Jotun's going to end up being the one kill they do manage to secure. Here comes Dazzle, though, and hits the shallow grave. Nothing pretty as a well-placed grave at the right time, and that allows them to avoid what could have been a very bad situation. However, they do get the visage behind it. I uh, didn't even say I'm going to guess that was the Forge Spirit that most likely finished off the kill, but still able to come in. God could have been in trouble there as well. So they managed to uh, at least elongate that fight, still unable to get the Visage away safely. Yeah, it was a really good rotation, but Dendi had a beautiful play, which was once the Shallow Grave was down, he just marched the Forge Spirit down towards that Tier 1 tower, keeping in step with that Visage, and then all it took was two auto attacks after that. And the Forge Spirits, I mean, they're such powerful ability, uh, powerful units right now because the Minus Armor, plus the fact that their range is actually just absolutely absurd. So getting in two easy auto attacks, uh, Dendi makes up for what could have been a pretty disastrous uh, attempt at a gank. So well done by him, but still the lane, despite these small pickoffs and, and small turnarounds here and there, Virtus Pro still controlling the laning phase very, very well. Oh, yeah. Not a single tower down, and VP has already built themselves a nigh-on 1,500 gold lead. And that's basically what you call an efficiency gold lead. They're just being more efficient. They're getting more out of these lanes than CS. They're being able to hold down important heroes like Invoker. Dindy still hasn't cracked double digits in his CS, and we're at just short of 6 minutes 40 seconds in. I mean, that is a huge win in and of its own right. Now the question is, what can they transition this early momentum into? What goals, what objectives can they accomplish across the map looking ahead to the 10-minute phase, the 15-minute, 20-minute, and so on and so forth? That's where a lot of these lineups that you see drafted, not just by VP, but by a number of teams, do come off the rails. You have to make sure that when you get an advantage, it translates into something more tangible than a, than a fairly decent look on a gold graph. And Navi, usually one of the best in the business at mitigating that fact. And uh, we saw that uh, we saw that uh, in game two, and they really put that on display. So likely to be a very similar situation here in game three. Yeah, I was wondering if uh, Nahaz, if you can go ahead and throw up that stat that I always love to be able to reference. It's pretty much the win strat for uh, it's the win stat for Pugna after the 25 minute mark, and it's pretty much abysmal. Pugna is a hero that gets an early, early advantage and has to end the game by the 25 minute mark. Now, Virtus Pro do have a little bit more sustain with the fact they have Bristleback and OD to be able to back up going 30, 35 minutes in. But top, ooh. That was a little close. Puppy teleported away. That's the disadvantage of having no uh, no stuns up on your supports. <laughs> yep, and that's something that you know is going to continue to be an issue. God, in the meantime, getting very near done with his four staff, so he's in great shape. He actually leads the board in CS. Haven't talked a whole lot about Razor. He's just a mid lane dominator. Looks like he's got something on the way to him, or perhaps not. Looks like he's just got his phase boots up. Actually, phase boots plus a wraith band at top. Havost being harassed back as Illidan shows his face. KKY forced to scurry away as well. But yet another quiet game, and it's been a, a myriad, it's been three relatively quiet games, especially through the early phases so far. Only four kills in eight minutes. And uh, don't know that that's going to last, though. Again, I think Virtus Pro has to have some very specific timing window in mind. And if they want a chance to win, they're going to have to walk through it. But Illidan, spotted by Havos, there's the Nova to follow it. Hex from KKY behind it. Frostbite's there, and another Impale. Uh, Earth Spike, excuse me, catches him out. Here comes Smile, though, and yeah, you just can't bring down a Bristleback. Havos eats a lot of magic damage off of the Decrep and the Nether Blast, and this is the punching power. Throwing haymakers from the shoelaces that Virtus Pro has in these early phases. They're off to a great start kill-wise. Their lanes went well, and now they're just about in position to take a Tier 1. They may need a little bit more help to make it happen, may need to finish that mech up, but it should be done right now. Yeah, that was such a big play there. And it's so hard to be able to deal with a Bristleback like that. Illidan had some beautiful, small little micromanagement moves where he turned his back consistently to Na'Vi and the incoming nukes. And that was really what played the difference there. His level 2 Bristleback and that 24% reduction. 24% uh, of his health was exactly how much he lived. So his his ability to just kind of move, micromanage his hero to be able to, to reflect as much damage as possible played a huge part because that mech is the biggest thing for Virtus Pro and when they want to be able to group up and start pushing down towers. Now, they're not going to do it just yet, 
but the mech does allow them to, whenever they want to, group up and push down towers because uh, it's such a big advantage in some of these early team fights. Now, I still think they're going to wait probably until 13, 15 minutes in, but uh, they, they definitely are ready for this push. And there's that stat over the uh, past the 35 minute mark. He's only 60 and 67. Like his win rate really drops off heavily once you get past a certain time. Now teams are running a lot more. What's happening is their teams are adjusting to that and they're running a little bit more late game, mid to late game with the Pugna now. And you, the OD is a big advantage of that kind of uh, uh, factor is that OD does give you a little bit more mid game and you can go past the 25 minute mark here. There's the weave. Now we're going to have the counter hex on Illidan. He is going to be caught with a static link and Sun Strikes on the mark. However, Mech keeps him up and fighting. Funnick might have to turn. However, they do get a kill on the Bristle and the Dazzle. So a nice turnaround going the way of Na'Vi that time. They're able to juggle the damage very effectively. Smiles there, got down the Nether Ward, and doing a fair amount of damage to these poor squishy supports who have relatively high mana costs right now. In all this time, though, it's worth mentioning, God has just been doing his own thing down in bottom lane. He uh, was with Jotam. Jotam not quite level 6 yet, so the ability to bring down the tier 1 rather hampered by the lack of familiars. But they did get some damage done. We can see it sits at about a quarter, quarter health, if not less. Havos, though, going to work here on the Tier 1 in Min. Now, Havos Farm sitting at 45. Not tops on the board, but not bottoms either. However, it's roughly on par with the Bristleback. The fact that Illidan has managed to keep pace is a very nice win for them as well. Not the same situation we saw last time where he began to fall behind early. Yeah, three of the four uh, top net worth all going the way of Virtus Pro right now, and it just goes to show how well they're controlling the lanes, and that's going to get worse. They haven't even begun to take those Tier 1 towers like you were talking about. They did a little bit of damage, but now they're finally grouping up. Eleven and a half minutes in, they're going to go ahead and take their first tower, and they're not going to stop anytime soon. They're going to rotate middle. They're going to rotate bottom. They're going to get that big tower advantage. And Na'Vi, they don't have really an answer. They can't actually make trades this early. Sometimes you'll see teams try and pick up a little bit of split push. Furion definitely would have been a big advantage here, but no one can push as fast as a Pugna, so it pretty much guarantees that Virtus Pro despite any sort of a, attempt by Na'Vi to try and split push or anything like that, they will get a huge gold advantage with these first three towers going down and maybe one tower going the way of Na'Vi. Now, you want to talk about sustain, just to touch on that for a moment, because we will see the uh, Virus Pro hook up as five very soon, perhaps right now. Between the mechanism, between Shadow Wave from Dazzle, not to mention Weave, as you said, much better now following its latest buff, throwing it out early on in a fight. The ability for Virtus Pro to once again extend these fights and allow all of these advantages to work in their favor is going to just be through the roof. Even mana not going to be all that big of a problem so long as they're all together and they can proc the Essence Aura of the OD. And uh, hell, a pair of Arc Boots certainly doesn't hurt either. Here we go. Ready to group up and push into this Tier 1 mid. They've got three in position, two at top. They may try to trade, but they're going to have to trade very quickly with a Pugna this time. The uh, push power going to be much quicker, and we can see that tower goes immediately down to half health. They've got the familiars there as well, just to help zone them off the backside of that tower. They're just now getting to the tier one at the top. They even have the glyph if they want to spend it. Tier one drops. There's an imprison, and they will think about engaging. Looks like Illidan sitting near the front. And they do go ahead and pop the glyph. Let's see if they want to try to head there on mass or if they're just going to end up trading. If they, if they are able to trade again, yeah, there you go. God will be caught with a cold snap as soon as he lands. Does manage to force staff to safety, but is going to need some more assistance. He'll get it, but yeah, this is the difference between this game and last game. Last game, Navi was trading these situations one for one. This time, they get a half a tower while Virtus Pro just melts one. Yeah, it was a good attempt by Navi. What they're trying to do is they're trying to utilize their their uh, spam. So they've got the the Razor, who is a really, really good ability to be able to try and uh, take some of those creeps out without getting too close, and the Crystal Nova coming out from uh, Crystal Maiden. So once that is maxed out, they'll have some really good abilities, just spam down a couple of spells and, and kind of push Virtus Pro back a little bit while they try and go for a trade somewhere else. And, and uh, they just don't quite have that yet. But you can see Na'Vi, they're moving around the map pretty aggressively, trying to keep up the pressure on some of these side lanes and force Virtus Pro to react rather than allowing them to just five man into towers with nothing being traded. Mm -hmm. It's an excellent point. And here we go, Illidan comes out. They try to zone them out. Going to try to bring down the Forge Spirit and need to get the deny on that tower. And Dendi actually gets the kill on the tower. So a little bit of mismanagement on the auto attacks there as the rest of Na'Vi does manage to retreat to safety. Havost 
getting some much needed farm. We'll be going straight up drums after phase. So no armlet build this time around. Looking to go with a race car approach is like we saw last time around. Virtus Pro leads and kills. We'll take a look at the gold graph here in just a moment after they bring down this tier one bottom. No contesting of it, of it whatsoever. And they're just going to go ahead and push through. And if you're Navi, all you can do is hope to trade. But what they're doing now is not only trading... They're, you know, earlier they traded half a tower for a tower. Now they're getting ready to trade two towers for one tower at best. They will get that tier one, but their push is just nowhere on the level of Virtus Pros. Yeah, I think this is still a smart decision, though, by Na'Vi. They know they're going to trade poorly, but it's the only thing they can do right now. They have to get as much gold as fast as humanly possible so they can get their basic items to contest Virtus Pro because they know they're going to go uphill soon. Speaking of, here we go. That tier three is already to half health. And look at poor Puppy. Just losing so much health to that Nether Ward. Smile taking a look at his build. Yeah, did max the Nether Ward as one would expect. Fun of doing what he can from behind. But, yeah, they, every time they come in, they're trying to engage, they're losing a lot. And we're actually going to see the Weave catch Havos there. That makes things problematic for him, as we can see his armor plummeting quite a bit. And Virtus Pro's not done. Continuing to hang around. Gets off the Imprison. The Ice Wall goes down just to hope. To stem the to, to stem the tide right now, uh, and really, I mean, they could just sit and do this over and over again. They really don't have a whole lot to lose just by camping lanes, and Navi has to account for that and still try to find some farm. And if they overcommit even a little, they can end up giving up so much here. I mean, an early loss of Iraqs against this kind of a lineup would be devastating. And we can see Virtus Pro continuing to just control the map near the Roche Pit and near this bottom lane. Funic, Dendi, Havost, Puppy all in position. Kuroki out towards mid right now. And Havost got to be careful. Came out a little far there, but the reaction a little slow in coming from God. That's already book two done on Smile, though. Yeah, that gives you pretty much lengthens your kind of uh, pushing timer. Um, mass Necronomicons pretty much allow you to push in uh, like 35 minutes in rather than just having to be like, we have to end this by 25 or we're done for. So that sort of lengthens the strategy, but Navi needed big advantage and they're going to smoke around behind Virtus Pro. And they're coming from the backside. The ward's already down. Here comes the boss. He's going to rage in. God, four staffs himself to safety. However, they do manage to blow up the Pugna right off the bat. And now Illidan going to be caught with a frostbite. Vincent Familiar is doing what they can. God going to be connected with by the sun strike out towards the side of the fight, though. And now Navi on the charge. Illidan's still there. There's going to be Funnick and Havos caught out. There's that sustain again. Shadow waves there. NS has enough for a grave. If he needs it, Dindy could be in trouble. Havos comes back out, though. After infesting in, there's going to be the static link onto NS. And he's going to be forced to grave himself. Now Illidan better just run for the hills and hope he finds some safety. Freezing field. Slowing him down, doing some damage. Havos still right on his tail. Havos eating quite a bit of damage, but doesn't matter. Able to survive through it. And off of that, the biggest exchange and the biggest flat on flat or er, <laughs> flat out team fight we've seen goes the way of Navi. Make it nine to seven and a gold lead that had eclipsed four thousand gold already cut in half following that engagement down to about two thousand. Yeah, that team fight was really just devastating for Virtus Pro. It all came down to the fact that Navi, they made some sort of exchanges. They, they picked up a couple of Tier 1 towers against this sort of pushing lineup very, very early on, which gave them a basic amount of gold. They needed drums. They needed phase boots. They needed those upgraded items. Even if they're just small stat items, it allows them to be able to actually fight Virtus Pro. You mix in a big advantage, like being able to smoke up around Virtus Pro and instantly pop a Pugna with that Finger of Death, that's really all you're looking for in this kind of lineup. And that was just a brilliant play by Na'Vi. Uh, the smoke up was the biggest part of that team fight that gave them such a huge advantage. And uh, even again, even then, it was kind of tough. Virtus Pro were still able to fight up against it a little bit. But uh, they know that Virtus Pro, they know that they have to push in right away because they gave up a big advantage to Na'Vi. And that means the timer for their push lineup has sort of just dropped a little bit more. It means they have to, they don't have that lengthy push timer where they could be like, yeah, we end the game by in the next 15 minutes. Now it's the next 10 minutes. Another bad fight, it's five minutes. It just keeps on going down as Na'Vi win fights. And here we go, once again, taking a run at the bottom tier three. The Forge Spirits being focused on that nether ward. Here we go, Havos wants to go on NS. Nice weave, though, got a couple. Even got Illidan amidst it as well, so his armor increasing. There's the mech to get him back up and ready to fight. The ward still stands with about half health, and they do manage to take the tier three. Funic eating some damage from the soul assumption behind that puppy. Forced off his own tower, 30 seconds, so he has his ultimate available. Funic trying to zone them out. Here comes a tornado. 
caught a couple. The rocks dropped as well. And a TP coming fresh in. Jonam got caught by the frostbite and actually four staff. However, the impale caught him amidst the stream. And Illidan's going to be hexed from the low ground. There's a shallow grave to make sure he stays alive. God drops the hammer onto the low ground. Smile able to keep himself alive with ethereal form thanks to Decrepify. Havost forced to pull back once again. Smile trying to suck some health. There's going to be a finger and they do get him. Managing to bring him down, and Illidan's next on the list. 12 to 7, Puppy, even able to survive with about 50 HP to rub between his fingers, and they're not done. Going to chase down NS. NS in trouble, cornered out, brought down. They got the tier 3, but man, did it cost them. And with three down, Navi, just look, look at this. We've got Funix sitting at 38 HP. We got less than 100 on Kuroki. We've got less than 100 on the Crystal Maiden. They walk away hurting. Hell, Havost was down around 100, 150 as well. They walk away hurting, but they walk away breathing. And that is a disastrous turn in this bottom lane for Virtus Pro. See, that's what ma that is really masterful about Na'Vi's whole entire plan to be able to deal with this. That's where those basic stat items come into play. Just think how different that would be if Havos didn't finish up his armlet or the Razor didn't have his Ogre Apps that is now built into a BKB. Now team fights look terrible for Virtus Pro after two very, very close, close wins. This lineup should have been able to end the game, but Na'Vi worked around it. They got themselves a big advantage in the first fight with the smoke. The second fight was just barely able to win and a 5v5 engagement because they were able to pick up those basic stat items, the stat items. They were able to win that first fight. They were able to claim some early towers. Those things, you think they're small, but they actually make a huge difference in whether or oh, not yeah. an early push lineup can actually end the game in time. And Virtus Pro, again, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, now it's 5 minutes. Virtus Pro, they need a, 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 at least a Rax right now or else they're looking very, very bad for the next 10 minutes. And as the has has pointed out, gold's one thing. But yeah, the experience alone, you're beginning to see Na'Vi just pull away by leaps and bounds. And whenever you have a lineup that's on, that has a shelf life like this, it's not just enough to have your items. You have to be on adequate levels, and they're losing that advantage. This might be their last realistic chance to push like this without being punished. We can see Havost was coming in through behind, uh, behind this lineup as it pushed. They have to decide what they're going to do, and this is actually really cute what Havost is doing. Showing himself, saying, yeah, here's a big fat target. Leave those racks away or alone. Don't worry. It's fine. And yeah, they can't commit to everything at once. The business familiars are there. Misses with one stun. Here comes the rest of Virtus Pro trying to punish him. But cutting the creeps like this, not allowing them to continue to push. And here comes the rest of Navi. Now Havost will be imprisoned, but he's got help on the way. They need to get there quick, fast, and in a hurry. Looking for a creep to infest into. Will not be able to get to one. He does manage to rage and toggle the armlet, though. And now heading into the low ground. He's trying to find some safety. He's going to be imprisoned again. The rest of Na'Vi behind that was waiting in a, in a position to hopefully engage. It looks like they waited a little bit too long, so they end up giving up Havost for free. Havost does have buyback if needed, but that's a long way for VP to push with the creep equilibrium all the way down to the turn of this bottom lane. Yeah, that was just a really brilliant move there from Havos. Sure, he got caught out, but it was just barely. If the poison didn't latch from the Dazzle, he wouldn't have been slowed up enough for the OD to be able to follow up with the Imprison and then be surrounded after that. If he'd just been slightly ahead of that Dazzle, he would have been fine and would have completely destroyed the push from VP. But still, they're not in a bad situation. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Illidan leading the charge, heading uphill. And Navi already in a position to react. Havost has respond. Now, this is what that accomplished. Yes, Havost died, but it bought time. It made them reset and look to re-push. And yeah, look at this. They're just able to force them off of, the, off of those steps so much easier now than they could even five minutes ago. And Virtus Pro is in very real danger of losing all that momentum. They had a ton. It's already starting to peter it out, but they can't come to a stop. And that has a real chance of happening if they don't manage to bring something worthwhile down. Jodem going to be caught by Havos. He's going to move on out. There's a four staff in, and he's caught out and blown up. Now, Funnick pops his BKB. God is caught with the static link. Illidan right beside him. Oh, good blast. And now Illidan. Next on the list, Na'Vi going to walk away with another win on the, on the steps of their own Tier 3. This is going to be a full five for one wipe. 
Ultra kill for Havos, so he makes up more than enough ground to justify that death in bottom lane earlier. Roshan likely to be his prize for, uh, for the win there, and honestly, I think that's about it. I can't imagine Virtus Pro being able to get anywhere near the high watermark they set about 10 minutes ago. Yeah, yeah, this game was very, very close, but now Na'Vi have a very convincing lead. You can still see that gold lead is finally going their way for the first time in this game, and experience is just dropped like a rock. It's now 12,000 in the lead of Na'Vi, and that's hugely important, more so than gold for a lot of these heroes, like Invoker. A lot of supports depend heavily on their levels, like Lion. If he can get that level 2 finger of death, that's a pretty game-changing pickup for him. So experience is a big, huge factor for uh, Na'Vi, and they've got all of it. They're going to be able to pick up the Aegis, which is a huge advantage as well in these team fights. And honestly, I don't know how Virtus Pro plan to be able to... They can't just five-man into the base anymore. They have to actually no. go for a pickoff. They have to reset and try and find some basic amount of farm to get items that'll change the fight. For example, BKB needs to be finished by Bristleback. He needs that item in order to be able to go into these team fights anymore. OD probably needs a Scythe of Vice before they can try fight again. And even then, it's going to be rough. Like, Na'Vi are going to be picking up more and more items, but it's the only thing they can do. The problem they face is their lineup is a guns forward lineup. This is not a carve the like, carve the map up kind of a lineup by any stretch of the imagination. They don't have the reach. They don't really have the playmakers. They have a let's get in a row and just run over a team kind of a lineup. And now that they have lost all of that speed and momentum, yeah, it, like Havos able to turn around here. He's able to survive. And, you know, and not to say they're not still lethal. They certainly are. They're behind. They're not tremendously behind. But the problem is we're at 26 minutes and they're having to just reset and go for tier twos instead of the tier three they had sold out on. This might have been the right call to make 10 minutes ago. Instead of trying to get aggressive and push a tier three, just clear the map, clear the jungle, keep a voice behind. And if they ever slip up and do walk into you, they do make a mistake, they do lose a hero without buyback, then just go start clearing the tier threes. As it stands, this really is their last chance. It'll then got to be caught by the frostbite. This tier two will end up dropping. We'll see if Navi wants to charge out afterwards. God's actually leading the charge himself. Astral in prison could be enough to start this fight. There's a weave that catches pretty much everyone on the side of Virtus Pro if they do decide to fight it out. And NS going to be pursued out. Puppy spins his ultimate, manages to get a kill behind this. Havos going the to town on Smile, who will be in prison to try and buy some time, but God ends up scurrying. Nope, ends up dead behind that. That's going to be another full five-man wipe, and that most certainly will be the end of Virtus Pro's realistic shot at this guns forward march down a lane strategy. And to tell you the truth, this might well be the end of the game. There's just nothing they can do against this, uh, the punching power. Na'Vi now has as their items have come in, their levels are too big. Take a look at the experience graph. 20,000 collective experience is how big a lead they've, they've managed to build. That's 4,000 experience per hero. Yeah, it's, it's a huge level lead over, and on top of that, like you said, they've got their basic items down. They have a couple of BKBs on Invoker and on Razor. They have Havos, who's actually hitting pretty hard with his very fast movement speed as well. And uh, it's just continued pickups. NS almost dies. Yeah, almost caught out to the south of that fight. And they're going to try to take a fight here. God, once again, going to be caught with Static Link and just being mauled upon. And look at that. Even the Sanity's Eclipse doing next to nothing. And Havos, once again, pretty low. He may end up dead here to Illidan. He most likely will. That's going to be enough to buy them some, some time, if nothing else, as they notch a double kill. But once again, up oh, Phonic actually able to get a kill will end up costing him his own life. So a nice charge back from Virtus Pro this time around. But uh, Dindy still has his Aegis, and because that took place in front of their own Tier 3s, the ability to push down, yeah, looks like they're pinging out the racks on bottom. But really, it's the, the, the respawn timers are too short. You're going to have Lion back up soon. Havost will be back up in 30 seconds. In the meantime, they do have the ability to delay by doing things. Oh, I thought Puppy was going to split push. Instead, he's going to go on back to base and just reset for a defense. Yeah, they, they're going to force out buybacks from the Razor at the very least. Havos may hold on to his. It's going to be 10 seconds, which is pretty much enough time for you to be able to take a building if, uh, <laughs> if Virtus Pro actually went uphill. But they break apart a little bit. They don't feel confident enough. With that buyback coming out from Razor, they say, okay, we forced out a buyback, sure. But I was really thinking, you know, a buyback down on Razor could be exactly what you need. If you finally do win a fight, you don't have to worry about that anymore. But uh, Virtus Pro back up, and that's going to leave God maybe out in the dry. Got it. About half health. Pursuit out. Funnick 
hustling around. Yasha phase boots on a razor. Sunstrike will connect. And <laughs> Kuroki decides to give him the finger and bring him down the hard way. And he's but, got uh, agonims, too. That's, yeah, that's what I love about that. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Um, oh, that's that. I mean, that's such a good. I, that's such a big pickup. Like Lion, a lot of times you don't actually think about being able to pick up the agonims even after the yeah. buff because you prefer mobility. Oftentimes, like the blink dagger, yeah. the four staff, those sort of things. But here, he's got two very squishy targets that are high profile. Three even Pugna, OD, and even the Dazzle is actually very high priority if you can just pop them real quickly. So that upgrade and that low cooldown is going to be great for Lion to be able to have. Oh, yeah, I agree with you completely. Just we talked about how squishy this lineup could feel outside of the bristleback and just having that amount of burst at this stage of the game is huge. It's such a liability for Virtus Pro to try to engage into it. They do know it's on cooldown right now, but not for much longer. About five seconds, it's back up and ready to go. Dindy has Aegis for just under a minute now, and they're going to catch Illidan. Illidan going to be the one caught with Static Link this time around, being chased by Funnic, forced to pop his BKB. BKB off on Puppy as well. Another good freezing field. Doing what damage he can. Here comes the Rock and Funnick and Puppy just going to work. Even Dindy getting in on the mix. That's three down. God gets off the ulti and it bounces off of him. May as well have just given him a pat on the cheek with that. That's going to be four down. Make it five. That'll be GG, one would imagine. And, uh, yep, there it is. So Virtus Pro shocked us all. I mean, <laughs> Nahaz even pointed it out coming into this series. The betting odds were 80% of the betting public in favor of Na'Vi. Virtus Pro had everyone scrambling after game one, but in the end, Na'Vi gets it together, wins two in a row, and they win here in their debut at the D2CL. Beautiful, beautiful all around by, by Na'Vi. I mean, that was such a close... You look at the scoreboard, and you look at the gold graph and the experience lead, and it doesn't look that close, but it actually really was. Na'Vi had to scrimp and save for every bit of stat items they, they picked up, and the only way they could actually win that first fight that they won was by smoking up and going around. If they didn't do that, I'm pretty sure they would have lost a 5v5, and that would have been a rax down, and all of a sudden, that means Virtus Pro have gained that huge advantage very, very early on, and I think they would have just snowballed into taking mid a, a, in another 5 to 10 minutes. So that was actually a very, very close matchup that Na'Vi had to do every small little thing they could in their power to gain an advantage over Virtus Pro because otherwise that lineup was just ready to pretty much steamroll them. So beautiful play by Na'Vi. If you ever want to look at how you deal with a Pugna push lineup and how you deal with some of those early push-ups, uh, this is perfect example what navi did being able to trade towers even if it was at a disadvantage even if it was two towers for one that's still gold going the way of navi basically split pushing picking up early gold and then finding an advantage in a team fight and taking it to that push line but not line up and not just letting them constantly siege down your racks so it was a brilliant brilliant game by navi left and right but virtus pro sure as hell have impressed people i think with this series Oh, yeah. Well, one thing I want to draw your attention to is, is OD, uh, God, who is usually such a centerpiece of everything that Virtus Pro does. I mean, look at his, look at his inventory. It looks like a yard sale, man. Just a little bit of everything. He's got an ogre club. He's got his uh, ultimate orb. Yeah, four staffs there, null talismans there, treads, whatever. But he finished 06 and 2. When you look at his overall GPM, 321, nowhere near where he needed to be. To put that in perspective, Puppy finished with a higher GPM than he did by the time all was said and done, as did Kuroki. So whenever you're talking about an OD who had such an advantage early on in their lane decisions, really loved their draft and loved the way they anticipated Navi's lanes and gave themselves as much chance for success as possible, it came down to what we were both talking about during the early phases of the lane phase. Namely, how do you transition, how do you translate an early lane phase advantage into something tangible? How do you go from having a little bit of an advantage early to turning that into an objective, turning it into towers down, turning it into map control, turning it into early Roshans, etc.? Really, that was Navi's beauty in their play. They did lose some towers, but they, they were trading kind of poorly to begin with. But when all was said and done, they were able to just keep Basically, to do what Virtus Pro did in game one, bend but don't break. And by the time uh, Virtus Pro ran out of steam, it really just turned up <laughs> to be a steamroll in the opposite direction. So uh, I imagine we're getting ready to sign off. want to thank, uh, take the time to thank you, uh, Capitalist, as well as Toby Wan and everyone who joined Dota, as well as the D2CL, for having me on. Thank you so much, my friend. It's been an absolute pleasure. Yeah, I've had a, a wonderful time, and I'm looking forward to our next couple days together. In fact, all, all of the group stage mm -hmm. will be casting together. So, guys, yep. if... Uh, 
If you enjoyed what we did here, this little combo that we put together, be sure and leave us a little bit of feedback, anything we need to work on. Be sure to follow AC at AC for more of those potential giveaways from Dota 2 Lounge, which we're going to do another one on my Twitter this time, at Dota Capitalist, right after we wrap up this stream. So be sure to go over there, be ready to grab that code and put it into Dota2Lounge.com slash giveaway for your chance for 10 free rares. Easiest rares of your life that you will <laughs> ever find. So be sure to go ahead and do that. AC, man, you thanking me is is uh, is just too much because thank you, man, for, for coming on. Uh, we do appreciate you pretty much lending your, uh, your voice to this broadcast. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next couple of days with you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Next couple of days, make sure you tune in again. Uh, check out D2CL.org. I'm pretty sure is what it is. You can find all the schedule. And Toby, of course, will be continuing to do a lot of the D2CL. But on the days he's otherwise occupied, it'll be me and uh, me and the guy you're hearing right now, Capitalist. And again, man, it has really been a pleasure. And getting to work with you again for the first time in quite some time. And really looking forward to not just the rest of this week, but all of the chances and opportunities we're going to have to see more good matches here at the D2CL. So once again, thank you. Yep, and uh, you guys definitely want to tune in tomorrow because that is going to be Alliance versus Sigma. We're going to be casting that one. That should be one hell of a series followed up by Cloud9 versus Liquid. We have so many good games uh, this week that, uh, we, in fact, I was talking about it with Toby. He was pretty jealous. He was pretty jealous. Pretty much he, he's, like, he's casting MLG right now, but he was looking at it and he was like, damn it. You got all of the good games. You got all the good games. So be sure to go uh, go over to joindota.com. So if you have any questions about the Dota 2 Champions League, you can go over there and uh, check out. Also, the live and upcoming tab where we have so many games going on right now for Join Dota. We have the Join Dota League. We have Dota 2 Champions League. And we also have MLG, which is going on right now over there at MLG.tv. We've got uh, the TKO Tournament. Sigma versus PR is going on right now. And I believe they are still casting i'm not quite sure if they've been able to wrap it up just yet but if you haven't go check that out guys and again thank you so much for tuning in go to my twitter at dota capitalist for that giveaway and that is it for today guys uh navi take it two to one